While you've been gone, we've lost signal, but we've had the best time I have ever had on foot in the wild. Over there, in the tree, is Shongile. She is 30 feet from us. When we found her, and I say we, Chandra spotted her, she was 100 feet away, and she is, uh, we sat down, and she slowly come closer and closer and closer, and then she climbed this tree behind us. And there she's sitting, just watching. She's watching Aubrey, she, her eyes flick to Aubrey, and then to Jandre, and then to me. And she's calling every so often, she's making a little kind of bird-like chirp, which I suppose is perhaps trying to call her mum, or maybe her brother. Hosana is around here somewhere. Now we're sitting exactly where Shungile and Karula were yesterday, where they killed that little impala lamb, and they finished it. Now let's just see what happens. I'm not going to move. I'm going to sit dead still. I think she's bored, everyone. I think she's just trying to have a conversation. She's curious. And we did a little Facebook Live from here. We tried to get a little kind of Facebook Live going because we were hoping, or we were desperate that we should be able to share this with you. Can you hear her calling you? I don't know if you can hear her calling. Now, Karula is off on the far eastern boundary. Of course, she's on a diker kill. She'll come back here at some stage to fetch Shungile and hopefully Hosanna as well. But in the meantime, this curious young cat is having a conversation with us. And I was trying to unpack what I felt about this. I was trying to unpack what it meant to me and why this was so special. And it's because this animal is not tame. She's not domesticated in any way. She is, in some way, she's an embodiment of wild. She's an embodiment of what it is to be in the wilderness. And that she has chosen to come and have this interaction with us gives us, I suppose, if not a view, it allows us almost to touch the heart of the wilderness. Now that might sound like a complete load of gobbledygook to many of you, but I don't know how else to explain why this is so special, why it's so much more special than when we're in a vehicle. It, we had an incredible sighting of her here yesterday, but this, this is, <laughs> this takes it to a thousand different levels. Even Aubrey, who's seen more leopards than you and I have had hot breakfasts, is sitting here smiling and enjoying this little leopard so close to us. <laughs> and of course, we're sitting here with a young leopard, and I'm, I know Brent has spoken about it, and I'm sure Jamie has too, uh, and Byron probably as well. They've spoken about how they enjoy being with young leopards like this on foot. And James, your question is, will she remain like this? And the answer is almost certainly not. You don't really want her to. When they become adults, they you lose that sense of curiosity and awe. What we do want is for her to be comfortable with people on foot so that when we track her as an adult, she isn't afraid and she will just go about her business and that will make viewing her eat more easy. But if we see Karula on foot, she tends to slink away and if she doesn't slink away, she'd never approach you in a curious fashion. So we found her sort of a hundred feet from where we're sitting now. If it had been Karula, she'd just have stayed exactly where she was. I don't think she would have moved off because we sat down immediately and just remained very still and quiet and spoke in these calming tones that I'm speaking in now. But that curiosity that these young leopards have will eventually dissipate as they become adults. She's bored. There's no question she's bored of lying there on her own. That's why she's chosen to come and have a conversation with us. I mean, I cannot believe this. I'm sitting 30 feet from the base of the tree that that leopard's sitting in. Is she coming down now? 
see if she comes closer still. <laughs> now when we started, she was very careful not to come out into the open like she's doing now. Now, I want to turn, but I'm not going to turn while she's watching me. I'm just going to very slowly move around. I think she likes the sight of Aubrey. She's going around to see what he's, he's like. Can you still see her, Jandri? No. Okay, she's just the other side of the tree. She's now moving away. Yeah, she's moving away from us now. If you want to stand, Jandri, stand now slowly. We're going to try and get one last look. No, she's gone. She's gone into the thicket. All right, well, um, we're going to head back to Brent and his mystery leopard. I will tell you, for those of you who were watching yesterday, you may have noticed that William of Juma lost his hat. We found it again. William will be very happy. I am absolutely ecstatic.